My guest today is the pinnacle of Padre fans. Let me put it this way. Every Padre fan knows Mark Grant. Mark Grant knows who this guy is. He's the face of Padre's Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Cohen. Ryan, how you doing? That is an awesome intro, man. Uh, I'm good. Baseball's back. I get to talk Padres, and it's not all about a lockout. So it's hard to beat that. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure you're thrilled baseball's back, right? It's. I don't have many hobbies, man. So I don't have any hobbies, actually, outside of baseball. So when there's no baseball, I kind of go into a, a hole and don't get out of it. And when baseball's back, I'm in a great mood. Sun is shining. Grass is a little greener. The birds are chirping. Yeah, I'm in a great mood. Are you excited for AJ's moves? What do you think he's going to do first? No idea what he's going to do. Uh, of course I'm excited. It's AJ Preller. Uh, he, you know, whether you love him or you hate him, there's no denying that he's uh, a rock star. He's a rock star. He's, I, you know, for lack of a better word, and forgive me on this, but he's ballsy. Uh, he, he's not afraid to make a move. And that makes it really exciting. So, you know, I have no idea what he's going to do. He could do nothing. Wouldn't shock me. He could trade for Mike Trout. And honestly, it wouldn't really shock me. It's AJ Preller. So I hope he makes some fun moves and we have more guys to root for in, you know, in a month or so. But anyway about it, I'm just so happy I get to feel the joy and the frustration of a 162 in a full season and we get to live it all again. I'm sure you can't wait to get back to Petco Park. I know I can't. Um, I'm pretty sure you're going to Arizona to see them in spring training. Is that right? Bought my tickets yesterday. Yeah, I was I was thinking about it. I looked on some of my little apps where I can, you know, SeatGeek, uh, StubHub, all those kind of apps, and got a, a pretty good deal for Thursday. And I was like, okay, well, if opening day is going to be that good of a deal, I'll check Friday too. Got that. Looked at Southwest. Tickets weren't that bad, and I just booked it. I texted a couple friends, and three of us are going. So it's going to be awesome. You know, I've never been to a spring training game. How's it different from Petco Park in regular season? So I'm going to opening day in Arizona. Um, this nice. is, they're playing the Diamondbacks. I have been to spring training once. It's uh, it's very casual, which is really fun. Um, if that were the environment for a big league game, it'd be the most boring big league game you've ever been to. But if you love the players and you really know the team, it's so fun to be up close and personal. You're looking at them through a chain link fence, basically. I'm wearing actually a spring training shirt right now. Uh, nice. I had the craziest Padres day of my life at spring training because it's so personal. I mean, you're right there with everyone and get out to spring training. If you have a chance, you should do it. It's really really incredible. All right. Well, I want to get your thoughts on all the new Padres coaching staff. Let's start with Michael Berdar. He's like 27 years old. Do you think he's ready to be the hitting coach for a major league team, especially one that's trying to make it to the World Series? I mean... I'm convinced that every person who ever puts on Padres uniform is ready to win the World Series. So, yes, absolutely. Michael Berdar is the perfect hire, and I couldn't feel better about it. Um, was I a little bit surprised to see them hire someone under 30 years old? Yes, I was. I also like embracing the new wave analytics of hitting and, you know, launch angle and everything that goes in with that. I have no idea if he's going to be good. No clue, but I support it. You know, it's I, – I thought – I thought Jace Tingler, Bobby Dickerson, and uh, Wayne Kirby were the three greatest coaches of all time. And then didn't work out. And all of a sudden, it's, you know, Bob Melvin, Michael Berdar, and Ruben Yabler are the three greatest coaches of all time. So I'm uh, I'm all in. Whoever's, whoever's in the dugout, I support them. Well, you brought up Ruben Niebla. He is called the Pitching Whisperer, and I am absolutely stoked to see what he can do for the Padres pitching staff. Do you think he can turn the Padres pitching staff around in one year? Niebla, I, I, I feel incredibly confident about because we've seen it. And uh, this isn't to take anything away from Bernard. He could be the next, he could be the greatest hitting coach of all time. I don't know. But with Niebla, we have a bit of a track record with Clevenger and Quantrill just now in Cleveland has become way better. And, you know, I hate to use this name, but Trevor Bauer, Corey Kluber, all these right-handed starting pitchers in Cleveland who Niebla worked with. We have uh, this Mackenzie Gore fella who I've been waiting for for a couple of years. So if we can get him under Niebla's tutelage and, Turn him even, he doesn't even have to be an ace, man. If he can be a three or four starter in the big leagues at this point, I'll take that. And, you know, you, you're, if you're able to iron out little things in Ryan Weathers' delivery, Blake Snell can't find the zone for a couple starts, and you're able to figure that out, that'll be huge. That'll be huge. Um, and then when it comes to Melvin, and I think 
the Melvin hire is so important because Niebla and Bernard have never been the big league pitching slash hitting coach. And Melvin is such an established name in the game already and has so much respect for everything he's done already that when he speaks and he says, no, you have to listen to Ruben Niebla, it holds more power than when a Jace Tingler says that, even though Larry Rothschild had way more experience. Yeah, man, the Padres have like an S tier coaching staff, which is kind of crazy to wrap my head around. But when you come to think of it, the Padres are one of the best teams in baseball. So it only makes sense for them to have the best coaching staff around. And I'm excited for it. What do you think about the new bigger bases? Do you think the bigger bases are going to have any impact on the game? My first point on bigger bases is anyone who complains about bigger bases, you're not actually mad. You don't care. There's no way you care about an extra inch on a base. And if you do, take a deep breath. It's an extra inch. I have literally no idea if it will make even the slightest difference. If it's a little bit safer for the players, awesome. That's great. If there's five extra stolen bases this year because a guy gets his pinky in, Sweet. No more offense. That's good. If you want to complain about actual like shifts or, you know, DH, I'm willing to argue with you on that. I might disagree, but I'm willing to argue. If you want to whine about a bigger base, get a grip, you know, (laughs) what are we talking about? Yeah, man. Like you said, I thought it was just mainly about player safety and also probably will help with some stolen bases, which both of those are good. So and no one will notice. And until someone points it out, you're not going to go to a game and go, wow, that base looks Huge. seven centimeters larger than it used to. Like, come on. So the Padres have obviously been making a push for the World Series for some time now. What do you think they need to change this year to actually make it, if anything at all? Do you think they need to make any fundamental changes? It's kind of a cop-out answer because it's true for every team, but they need to stay healthy first and foremost. If those guys can stay healthy, stay on the field, and put up the numbers that they always do, My whole thing is make the playoffs and anything can happen. The Braves won the World Series last year. The Nationals won the last real World Series before that. The best team doesn't always win. It's just get to the dance and anything can happen. And they're talented enough to get to the playoffs. I They got a good chemistry going. You get into October and literally anything can happen. So just get there and you know, let it ride from there. Yeah, I think with the new expanded 12-team playoffs, I think the Padres have a very, very strong chance to make it to the playoffs. And, you know, from the playoffs, hopefully to the World Series. All right, so if you could pick someone to be the Padres DH, someone they don't currently have, who would you choose? Who would it be? It's a great question. Um, I've seen Nelson Cruz's name floating around a lot. I obviously would be more than happy to have Nelson Cruz on the Padres. That'd be awesome. I mean, if I could pick anyone, anyone, or someone real. Anyone. Freddie Freeman. It would be crazy to see him as a Padre. It's not going to happen, but it would be crazy. It would be awesome. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I think there's going to be some value, and I'd love to have a Nelson Cruz type. I think it'd be great to have a slugger in that DH spot. But I think if they go into the season, if they address left field first, I'm way less concerned about DH because it can become a revolving door. Machado can have a day. Tatis can have a day. Haas can be at first. Cronenworth can place, or Cronenworth can be at first. Hosmer can DH for a day. And Kim can be at second. Like they can shift it around, especially with a guy like Profar who can play everywhere and can DH. I'm not that worried about it, but I don't want to see, and I love Jerks and Profar, but I don't want to see him as the starting left fielder. So I think the first priority for me would be left field. And then go into the season with a revolving door at DH. If you realize midway through the year that you need more power, you need more speed, whatever it may be, you can make that midseason trade and stick them in the DH role. But I I mean, I'd, I'd be happy if they sign a DH, if they trade it for a DH. But if they don't, that's not my biggest concern right now. And the good thing about Nelson Cruz is that he's shown some interest in being a Padre. And anyone that shows interest in being a Padre is okay in my book. I absolutely love Profar, too. I just love the energy he brings to the team. He's always got the biggest smile on the field. Um, do you think Platoon is the best option for him? Yeah, I think that's his best role. Um, I think that's what he did so well in 2020 was... He started at second base. He slotted in at left field a lot. And when Fam got hurt, he was in left. When Cronenworth was playing first, he was at second. He was kind of all over the place. He DH some. And he was good bat off the bench when there was a DH. You know, you don't need him pinch hitting in the fifth inning when the pitcher comes out of the game. You can slot him a little bit better um, depending on the matchup because of the DH. And I think, like you said, the energy level, that's such an important thing to have off the bench. And Obviously, he's loved by his teammates. I mean, Tatis has got his arm around him every other day. So 
I think Profar is a good piece on a championship level team, and I just don't want him starting in left field. And honestly, obviously Profar will say he wants to start in left field. He's a major league player. He wants to play every day. But I think that's not some outrageous statement. I'd imagine the clubhouse largely agrees that Jerickson Profar's best role is in that kind of utility bouncing around the field. I agree with you, man. Now let's talk Fernando Tatis Jr. Do you think he's best as a leadoff or best in the three or four spot? It's a good question. Uh, I go back and forth on it. As a fan, I want to see him as many times as possible, right? So leadoff is best because I want him up in that ninth inning if we get back to the top of the order. I still, you know, I've, I've dived into the analytics on some level with the minimal math skills that I have, and I still don't fully understand the value of hitting third instead of first or first instead of third. I, I don't, I haven't been able to grasp that. So I don't know what's statistically more valuable. It honestly probably equals out over a full season. And I think a leadoff home run is the coolest way to start a big league ball game. And we know that Tatis has done that and can do that regularly. I also think the grand slam is a really cool thing to see too. So when he's hitting fourth with three guys on, it's, this is pretty fun. Uh, Absolutely. As long as he's in the top four of the lineup, I'm not going to complain about it. I kind of like him hitting two also. I think that's fun because then you get a Grisham or someone in front of him, and then it's a two run homer. So I don't know, man. I'm, that's Bob Melvin's call, and I'll roll it. As long as he's not hitting fifth or below. If he's hitting fifth or below, then we got real problems. No, maybe in year 14 he might hit yeah, fifth. Yeah, yeah. All right, now this is an important question. Do you believe in the San Diego sports curse? No. No. Why not? Uh, because there's only one team. And <laughs> the Padres are going to win the World Series this year, and then the curse disappears. That's, that's right. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know. I like, I get really superstitious in game. If I'm sitting a certain way on the couch and they're coming back in the ninth inning, I'm not going to move off the couch, but I try to, I'm not great at it, but I try to avoid thinking too much about curses and superstitions when the games aren't on or else I would just drive myself up a wall. I feel you. I'm superstitious. I'm one of those rally cap guys. Know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I've done it. It's different. When you're at the game, that's a different story because you you have control over stuff when you're there. I believe that 100%. You bring the energy, you know, you got to, especially some of those 2011 through 2018 games, there weren't all that many people in the stands. You got to have some fun with it. So, you know, you get a whole section start yelling. All of a sudden, the right fielder on the Marlins is a little bit distracted. And boom, next thing you know, that ball drops in for a double. Well, how do you feel about the wave? Oh, I hate it. I hate the wave. <laughs> I, I want to watch the game on the field and people are going like this in front of my face. It's one thing. It's one thing if you're down or up by a lot and the game's over pretty much. But sometimes, dude, it's the eighth inning and it's like a 5-4 game. And we got Tatis at the plate and there's a, some, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying to watch this pitch. You don't, don't think it's a good distraction that. method? No, I don't care. It distracts me. I want to watch the game. I, I'm not a curmudgeon about it. I don't tell people to stop. But I'm not joining them, you know? Okay. I just thought you would participate. I mean, I want to watch no? the I want to watch the game. All right, that's fair. And just going back, I don't believe in the sports curse either. Cause look, we had two professional teams. They both made it to the end goal. They both made it to their respective championships. Granted, they didn't win it, but they still made it there. And that still counts for something in my book. And they're gonna win it this year. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, I know you do some charity work. Um, is there anything you want to plug before I let you go? I Well, first of all, first plug and most important, go pods. So happy to be <laughs> back. Cannot wait to see people in the stands hug after homers. Life is going to be good soon. Life is good, but it's going to be better soon. Uh, in terms of stuff I do, I'm the director up here at UC Davis of Camp Kesem. Um, It's a free summer camp for kids whose parents have been affected by cancer. Uh, I get really emotional when I talk about it. So I'm trying to talk about it really monotone right now. So I don't start crying on you, but it's, um, it's really special. And we have about 300 campers. We got over a hundred counselors. Um, and there's a lot that goes into it. It's completely free for these families. So we, we raise all the money. We host events, we put on different, uh, activities throughout the year. And then we have our summer camp in the, in the summertime, obviously. And it's, uh, it's, it's life-changing for sure. It's, um, you know, these it's they're six to 18 years old and I've learned more from seven year olds than any of my college professors sometimes, because it's not only inspiring, it's like, 
it's life changing. It like you see it and it changes your life and it changes the way you look at the world and you want to do everything possible to be there for them and help them. And that, that, that means that camp means more to me than anything, even the Padres. That's incredible. Is there any way people can donate to that? Yeah. The, uh, the donation link is donate.kesum.org slash Padres. Uh, it's also in my Twitter bio. It's right there. If you click on my name, it's, it's right below it. And um, I, I, make a big effort to fundraise every year and that's i hate asking people for money but that's the one exception i make where i i'll do whatever i can to make sure we get camp on it's understandable and on twitter you're just at ryan cohen 24 ryan cohen 24 yeah it's my favorite number why is that your favorite number cameron maben cameron maben i loved cameron maben he was number 24 so it was etched into my I, as soon as I got to be able to pick a number in little league and soccer growing up it was always 24 because I wanted to be Cameron Maven so bad wow and, uh, I I know he's a giant and this is kind of going against the Padres but I think Willie Mays is the greatest player to ever live and I love his catch over the shoulder I like it's ingrained in my mind is one of the first baseball videos I ever watched and he has the 24 to the back so I love the number 24 so if I can it literally my Every single platform I have, Ryan Cohen 24, except for Instagram. It's the only one. 24 makes me think of Ken Griffey Jr. He's up there too. I got his jersey right over here. Yeah, it's right here. How about that? Whipped it out. Dang, there you go. I got Snell on. Yeah, I got Blake Snell's 24, which he had oh for my God. seven minutes last year. Yeah, that is rare. If someone wears 24, I get their, like, I, I love the number 24. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you stopping by today. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, my pleasure. Absolutely. And uh, it's going to be a fun season. I'm super excited. Hope to have you back again sometime. Go Padres. I'll see you later, man. Later. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ryan Cohen. Go Padres. And if you noticed anything weird about this interview, it's because I interviewed him on Zoom. And of course, Zoom didn't record my half of the video. So I had to record again my half of the video and just superimpose it over the interview. I did ask the exact same questions. And so I'm sorry if it was a little weird, but I had to do what I had to do. A little bit of movie magic. Subscribe if you liked it. Like, comment. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Kevin Talks Padres. Peace.